against Bitcoin. It's going up forever, Lord. You're against Bitcoin, you're against freedom. Yo, welcome to another episode of Simply Bitcoin Live. You're Number one source for the peaceful Bitcoin revolution, breaking news, culture, matic warfare. We will be your guide through the separation of money and state. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the most watched daily Bitcoin live show on YouTube, Rumble, and X, Simply Bitcoin. I want to talk about something today that I think a lot of people inherently feel, but perhaps they're not completely aware of it. And as a first generation American, you're sold on the idea of the American dream. This idea that you can come to this country uh, with nothing in your pocket, and if you work really, really hard, you can achieve great, great things. Uh, it's something that my parents have done. It's something that my, uh, my parents-in-law have done. But I think that in their era, right, you know, 20, 30, 40 years ago, it, it, was, a lot, it was a lot different back then. Uh, perhaps the American dream in the traditional system was achievable, but in today's world, I would say trying to achieve the American dream is becoming out of the, out of reach for most people, right? You, you really have to be part of the, you know, the, the top income bracket to achieve the American dream, to have the house with the white picket fences, you know, to work one job and, you know, your partner, whether that's your wife or your husband could stay home and take care of the kids. And I think that fiat has fundamentally broken that. And I'll make the case for that today. But the American dream isn't dead. In fact, the American dream has now been made international. Anyone could achieve the American dream, no matter where you are. And that's because of Bitcoin. Bitcoin not only makes the American dream achievable, but may, Bitcoin makes the American dream a reality once again. Because if you've been living on a Bitcoin standard, or if you are living on a Bitcoin standard, that house with the white picket fence, or that condo for whatever reason you want a condo, okay, whatever floats your boat, now it's affordable. Now you can actually see yourself in the future being able to afford that certain thing if you work hard enough to be able to afford it. And it's our job as Bitcoiners, as Bitcoin educators, to really wake people up to the reality that, you know, these politicians, right, it is an election year in the U.S., aren't going to do this for you what you have to do for yourself, you have to take agency and action over your own life, responsibility over your own life. And you have to vote with your wallet. You have to vote by opting out. It's the peaceful revolution. It's the protest of Bitcoiners. It's the protest of individuals. And the awesome part about Bitcoin is that no one could stop you. No one could tell you not to do it, even though they're trying, but it's going to be a very, very, very incredibly difficult for them to do so. Now, you can only realize this newfound sovereignty, this independence, if you not only buy Bitcoin, earn Bitcoin, mine Bitcoin, but you also have to take it into self-custody. And by doing that, you have a shot to live out the so-called American dream, no matter where you are on planet earth. So we're going to talk about that today. And also quick update for you guys, because the whole theme of this show is the separation of money and state. And what we like to point out for you guys, and we like to keep you guys informed of what is the other alternative. The other alternative, we always say Bitcoin or slavery. The other alternative is central bank digital currencies. The other alternative is the continuation of the current system, the continuation of the pit, the pillaging of the average everyday man by the elites using the traditional financial system. This started in 2008 
the first bailout to Toshi Niu, it's written in the Genesis block. Chancellor on the brink of the second bailout for banks. He knew that they were just going to continue printing money. And like we've told you guys many, many times, when they print money, it's a wealth redistribution mechanism. Opti showed the meme on, on the Monday episode. It's a wealth redistribution mechanism from the lower and middle classes that don't have the means to save in assets. Therefore, they don't benefit from asset inflation. They're saving in fiat money. And it's back to the government and it's back to the extremely wealthy. Everyone else gets left behind. Bitcoin is your opportunity to say enough is enough. I'm tired of being stolen from. I want a future not only for myself, but for my kids and my kids' kids. And I deserve, very strong word, to live a good life full of hope and optimism. And Bitcoin can provide that for you. So this is what it's about. This is what the peaceful revolution is about. It's about fixing the money. And by doing so, we fix the world. Anyways, I do want to bring up my legendary co-host, who is always optimistic. He has a giant smile on his face. How you doing, Opti? And looking good, man. Uh, uh, the Bitcoin Johnny Depp is back in the house. Uh, uh, I ate some candy yesterday. I think I got a pimple, so it is oh, what it is. I'm, I, dude, it I love candy. I'm trying not to eat candy, you know. And and actually, today's guest would probably be a good uh, a good little whip in the in the bum about eating candy. But anyways, before we get into that and who our guest is today, you know, this is why we say Bitcoin is hope. Bitcoin is hope for the world. We understand, especially as Bitcoiners, we understand the financial trickery and how it has essentially kept the majority of people down so that the elites can profit off of, uh, you know, the backs of everyday men. And this is why Bitcoin is going to be successful. This is why Bitcoin is successful. Someone in the chat said Bitcoin is our financial 1776. I would say it's the world's financial 1776. You don't have to be an American, quote unquote, to see the benefits of Bitcoin. And today's going to be a good guest because we do have a non-American on the show. So shouts out to Coach Carbon, uh, a part of the Bitcoin Ballers Academy. He, We're going to be talking about getting your mind right, getting your body right. And I, I really like that we have someone that is non-American on today's show. So you can chime in on the quote unquote American dream and what that means to you and, and all that good stuff. Anyways, how you doing today, Coach Carbon? Glad to have you. I'm all good. Nico, just want to give you a round of applause. That intro, it got me fired up. Um, <laughs> Let's go. Before we jumped on, Opti asked me how I'm doing. I said, every day I wake up positive in a happy mood, but then you go through the day and you see the fear clown orders going on. It can bring you down. But that that intro, brother, <laughs> it was deep. And it's the you spoke about the peaceful revolution and the opportunity. And as you just mentioned, Opti, that the American dream, I see, I see it as the human dream. The, 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 the yes. Human, Every single human being has an opportunity to live a better life. And which vehicle are you going to use? We've tried many over the years. Bitcoin is the best one I've seen. No one's, come, no one's coming out with an alternative that is viable. So, yeah, it's Bitcoin until we die, as, as I say. <laughs> 100%. It is Bitcoin or slavery. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be an incredible show. I'm incredibly excited. We have so much to uncover. We have so much to talk about. Uh, but before we get started, I do want to give a very special shout out to our flagship sponsor. And of course, I'm talking about Bitcoin Well. Bitcoin Well is the best place to build your automatic Bitcoin self-custody stack. That's right. If you buy Bitcoin on Bitcoin Well, you can't buy Bitcoin unless you're going to take self-custody, which perfectly aligns with the Simply Bitcoin ethos of the separation of money and state. Self-custody is the revolution. Help us make self-custody the standard in the United States of America. Help us by doing, by supporting the only Bitcoin on-ramp that is self-custody by default, Bitcoin Well. So go to BitcoinWell.com today, sign up, and check out the Bitcoin Well Bitcoin Jackpot contest it's currently live the current jackpot hasn't been updated on the website currently has 3.5 million satoshis in the jackpot uh and uh so go check it out also they're going to be giving away uh a, a lot of stuff for example uh, there's going to be a Shamari package. It's uh, worth about $80, uh, two, two books, uh, a deck of cards, 
And uh, everyone that enters this week right now, uh, you get a 10% off promo uh, from Shamory. So guys, check out bitcoinwell.com slash contest for more, in, uh, for more info. All you got to do is just buy Bitcoin on Bitcoin. Well, you'll earn points that gives you the points to enter into the jackpot contest. Uh, we're going to be giving away prizes. Uh, so go check out BitcoinWell.com today. Uh, it's it's absolutely awesome. And uh, help us make Bitcoin self-custody the default around the world, because that's really, really how we're going to change things. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get to the numbers. We have a lot to talk about. The Bitcoin numbers. Is your Bitcoin in cold storage really secure? Is your seed phrase really secure? Stamp Seeds Do It Yourself Kit has everything you need to hammer your seed words into commercial grade titanium plates instead of just writing them on paper. Don't store your generational wealth on paper. Paper is prone to water damage, fire damage. You want to put your generational wealth on one of the strongest metals on planet Earth, titanium. Your words are actually stamped into this metal plate with this hammer and these letter stamps. And once your words are in, they aren't going anywhere. No risk of the plate breaking apart and pieces falling everywhere. Titanium stamp seeds will survive nearly triple the heat produced by a house fire. They're also crush proof, waterproof, non-corrosive and time proof. All things that paper is not allowing you to huddle your Bitcoin with peace of mind for the long haul. Stamp your seed on Stamp Seed. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I made it incredibly easy for you guys. You can scan the QR code on your screen. It'll take you directly to the Stamp Seed website where you can use promo code simply to get 15% off. Check out Stamp Seed today. At the time of recording, the Bitcoin price is 69160 sats per dollar 1446 block height 836527 blocks to having 3473 having estimate april 20th 2024 total lightning network capacity 4381 bitcoin capacity value 302 million us dollars realized monetary inflation 1.73% the market capitalization of bitcoin currently sitting at 1.36 trillion Bitcoin versus gold market cap, 9.84%. In the grand scheme of things, Bitcoin is just getting started. So let's talk about today's theme of the episode. So what is the American dream? The American dream is the belief that anyone, regardless of where they were born or what class they were born into, can attain their own version of success in a society in which upward mobility is possible for everyone. Now, let's actually take a look at how this is doing so far, right? That's the idea of the American dream. That's how you were sold on the U.S., you know, especially if you're an immigrant, you were sold on this idea of what the American dream is. Uh, but let's kind of dig into the details. So it says owning a home has long been considered the quintessential American dream, but the path to those white picket fences is far from smooth. Although 84% of Americans say they, they would like to own a home one day, 51% who don't own today worry that they'll never get there. So let's let's talk about why that is. Well, first, this happened uh, earlier on in the week. And uh, once again, uh, you know, these, uh, how do I say this nicely? Um, the bureaucratic elite are spending money they don't have. Um, and... What do I mean by that? You know, the U.S. government spends about one to two trillion dollars more than it collects in tax revenue every single year. How are they able to afford that? Well, they print the difference and printing money as much as they would like you to believe it's free isn't free. It hell it hurts everyone that saves and earns in that specific money that they're printing. In the case of the U.S., it's obviously the U.S. dollar. Now, the U.S., the the you know the U.S. because it's a world reserve currency has a little bit more leeway, so they can get away with a little bit more printing without hyperinflation, but it still has consequences, right? And those consequences affect specifically the low the younger generations the most, the millennial generation, the Zoomer generation, because 
generally what happens when you're younger, you're less wealthy. You've had less time to accumulate wealth, right? So when they when you hear these bills, when you hear when you hear these bills being passed, House passes 1.2 trillion dollar spending bill, uh just understand that they're stealing from you. That's what's happening. That's literally what's happening, especially if you don't have the means to save an asset, especially if you're not saving in Bitcoin. Um, here is a tweet by the Pacific uh, Bitcoin handle. It says the U.S. House passes $1.2 trillion spending bill, meaning they're going to print it out of thin air. This is what $1 trillion looks like. So here's a $10,000 $10, stack. Here's a $1 million stack. Here's $1 million next to a guy. Here's $100 million next to a guy. For audio listeners, about a pallet next to, you know, a, a uh, you know, an average, uh, an average male. And uh, there's $1 billion and it's about 10 pallets, right? You know, those, those uh, warehouse pallets, right? So they're pretty big. And then check this out. One guy next to $1 trillion uh, and it's an absurd amount. It is like literally like a football field, like two football fields put together of pallets that are stacked on top of each other just to kind of give you a visual reference of what a trillion dollars looks like. And they're passing that. They're printing that. It's coming out of thin air. Okay. So now what are the actual you know, consequences of this money printing. So here's the M2 money supply represents how much, basically how much money is being added to the money supply. And this is, this is the, you know, this is pandemic, right? This is what happened. This is the, you know, this is a uh, QE to infinity and they turn on the money printers once again. And there is consequences to that. What are the consequences to that? Well, take a look at this. Isn't that a coincidence, everyone, that uh, the medium sales uh, price for a home uh, went up directly. It's almost as if it's correlated to the amount of money that they're printing. So it's not that the housing prices have doubled. It's that people are like desperately trying to seek places to find a store of value so that their money, so that their purchasing power doesn't decrease. Their purchasing power doesn't get debased. And then what does that happen? What happens when there's a monetary premium on top of real estate because people are using it as an investment vehicle rather than as housing? Well, anybody that can't afford, you know, anyone who's just getting into the, you know, it, just trying to purchase their, their first home, they're outpriced. That's what happens. And then tie this back in with what I was saying about the American dream. It steals the American dream. There was an episode with Breedlove and McCormack and Breedlove did an amazing rant about how much time was stolen with the trillions of dollars that they printed. And the number that he got to and the way that he did the math is you know, the, av the person works from 18 years old to 65 years old. If you include all the money that was, uh, that, was, that was printed, they basically stole the working life of 3.2 million people when they printed the money that they did. There's a real life consequence to that. Now, what does that look like on a graphic level? So here is uh, Investing Rob, and uh, he said, is, is the American dream. The estimated cost to achieve the American dream is now $3.4 million. That includes buying a house, raising two kids, investing for retirement, and more. Do you think the dream is dead, or has it evolved into something else? Right, And here, for audio listeners, here's a graph between the baby boomers and the millennials, right? And uh, the medium household income for a baby boomer back in the day, right? Buying a home in 1985 was $23,000. The average home was $83,000. Now, the medium household income for millennials is around $74,000, but the medium home price 
is about $468,000. Now, when I read into this tweet this morning, and when I was kind of building up the show and seeing, okay, what are we going to talk about today? It dawned on me. I said, the American dream isn't dead. You just aren't on a Bitcoin standard. So what do I mean by that? I love this website and I'm going to continue showing this website so that you guys, hopefully the listeners, the people that are on the fence, the people that perhaps haven't taken the orange pill, the people that have perhaps not taken self custody yet. And we get comments every once in a while saying, Hey, finally took self custody, finally get it. So I'm going to keep beating this battle drum. If you've been living on a Bitcoin standard, even with this insanity right here, even with this, even with housing going from the average house in 2020 being 322,000 to the average house in Q4 2022, almost being half a million dollars down to 417,000, but still a lot higher than where it was in Q2 of 2020. If you've been living on a Bitcoin standard, the average house in the U S has gotten 87% cheaper. And because we have a special guest today from the US, from the UK, let's talk about the UK as well. If you've been living on a Bitcoin standard, the average house in the United Kingdom has gotten 92% cheaper. In the United States, it's gotten 87% cheaper on a five-year scale. On a three-year scale, it's gotten 68% cheaper in the United Kingdom. In the United States, it's gotten 75% cheaper. Bitcoin enables the American dream. And I also found this uh, very interesting article by someone that we've brought up on the show. It's, a, it's an article over at Bitcoin Magazine. And the headline for audio listeners is, Bitcoin will completely change real estate markets and interest rates. It goes on to say, people used to own real estate because of its utility value which is characterized by the fact that you can live it in it and use it for production. Today, however, it serves the world as the primary asset for storing value, a former function of money that is no longer possible due to decades of monetary inflation that has decimated people's purchasing power. As a result, housing, therefore, the cost of living have increased significantly. Since the introduction of Bitcoin in 2009, there has been sound money again, which serves as a store of value by default. By functioning as an actual store of value, Bitcoin will most likely absorb the monetary premium that real estate has accumulated over decades of monetary inflation and housing will collapse to its utility value. The properties of Bitcoin make it an ideal store of value. So there's a lot to unpack there. Thing number one, you can't just pick up a piece of real estate and take it with you. Thing number two, upkeep, right? You have to maintain the piece of real estate, rather maintain the land, rather maintain the actual building, you know, because it, it, you know, it degrades over time. So you have to reinvest in kind of, uh, you know, uh, fixing it back up again and stuff. And then two other things. Thing number one is not only is saving in Bitcoin going to uh, make housing affordable for you, but over the long term, as more people realize that Bitcoin is the superior store of value, the prices of real estate are going to go down because the monetary premium goes away as more people realize, okay, instead of buying, you know, all these properties just to maintain my purchasing power, I could just store it in Bitcoin without having to pay property tax and without having to pay upkeep. Bitcoin literally fixes this. So Bitcoin brings back the American dream, not only for the U S but bring Bitcoin exports the American dream all over the world. And if you save in Bitcoin, it's an undeniable fact that your life gets cheaper. Everything becomes more affordable over time. 
Now, our job as Bitcoiners is to wake people up to this beautiful world, this bright orange future, so that they stop getting distracted with the divide and conquer politics of the left and the right, the Republican versus the Democrat, the liberal versus conservative. Because I think a lot of people feel the economic hardships and they continue to seek a political solution where the solution is not necessarily a political one. The solution is to opt out of broken money. And I think by doing that, it will bring the world together and it will make the world a much better place, a much affordable place, a much hopeful place, uh, a world of peace and prosperity which usually coincides when the world is living under a sound money standard. So let's, uh, let's bring this back as Bitcoiners. We have, a, we have a, a monumental task in front of us to orange pill the people around us that are still getting distracted, that are still hurting unnecessarily so. And it's our job to take agency and personal responsibility to push this message out there. Because I really believe that it will bring the world together. It won't bring the world apart. Anyways, that's my take. Opti, what's your take on all this? And then uh, we'll uh, we'll go to Coach Carbon. I love a I love a hopeful Nico in the morning. This is nice. This is nice. Even though I can tell you're you're a little sleep deprived, but still. Anyways, uh, just going back to the topic. You know, uh, bootstrapping yourself in in recent uh public consciousness has kind of been turned into a dirty meme of like work hard acquire assets build yourself a better life and we're kind of in this weird place right now where like everyone wants to be a victim and everyone's trying to be the winner in the victim olympics but what i love about bitcoin is that something about saving in the hardest best money in the world it turns that fire within you on and you just want to be a better version of yourself and once you have a money that doesn't perpetually lose value you have hope for the future and if you're not hopeful about the future how are you going to work towards a better life and a better world and we're seeing right now that this is a global phenomenon going on right now that everyone's like nihilistic they have no hope for the future they're all stuck in the rat race and Bitcoin allows us to live a better life. And to me, that's what the American dream is all about, about the fact that you can move up the social hierarchy. You can move up the social ladder, the economic ladder and and, you know, build things, provide for your family, build a family and and live a better life. And you can literally do that by just saving some of your capital into Bitcoin, literally just by saving in Bitcoin. That dream, that meme of the American dream is attainable to every single person on planet Earth. And, uh, you know, to your point, Nico, I, I find it very interesting that, uh, you know, we are American centric. So we'll pass it to Coach Carbon to get more of a, a global view on this. But I find it very interesting how American patriotism has been so wrapped up into the dollar that the government must back the money and, you know, that the America needs a dollar for to continue its prosperity. And I just think it's flawed. Like, I think if you have a better money, your society will be a better society. And I believe America was built on the idea of, of working hard, bootstrapping yourself, building things, providing value and acquiring land and assets and things that allow you to live a better life. And now, again, this is attainable for every single person on planet Earth. But I find it interesting how so many people wrap up their identity, their patriotism, their nationalism with their local currency. And I just think it's flawed thinking. Obviously, it's brainwashing, for lack of better terms, the psyop by the nation state to basically keep you in your place. You know, we, we all know the idea of like the the elite. If, go back to the meme that I played on Monday that, you know, the uh, the elites have used the Cantillon effect, the, the money printer to benefit their friends and family. And, and a lot of people are blaming this on capitalism. You know, there's a, there's a big trend, at least in America and, and in various parts around the world that like, oh, capitalism's bad. And in reality, we just live in a crony capitalist system where it's like, if you're closer to the money printer, you're going to live better. And I think people subconsciously understand that there is a problem, but they don't understand that it's all about the money. It's always been about the money and it will always be about the money. And to today's point of the bit that we're seeing, you know, money printing makes us all poor. And the fact that the bureaucrats can print money out of thin air, 
it makes us all poor. This is why we have proof of work in Bitcoin. You need to have work behind your money. You need to make the money hard to create. This is why it's called a hard money in the first place. And so as Nika always says, and he didn't say it today, and I'm glad he didn't because then I can say it. it's like, why must I work for a money that another man can print for free? Well, the answer is I don't have to. I save in Bitcoin and let them play their stupid fiat game. And, you know, again, the other last thing I want to say before I pass it on to Coach Carbon, I find it so interesting because I have I have friends that, you know, they they basically troll me. They're like, oh, you're a Bitcoiner. You know, I'm buying real estate. Like, that's the safest way to save money. You know, my house went up X dollars this year, X percentages. And I'm usually just like beating my head against the wall. It's like, it's not that your house got more expensive, guys. It's that the dollar got weaker. It's that your local currency got weaker because they're printing obscene amount of money. And it's just using these mental judo tricks to try to explain to people what is actually going on. Because if you've learned anything by trying to orange pill your friends and family is that logic doesn't work on them. So you got to hit them in an emotional, you know, maybe humorous, uh, maybe mock them a little bit so that they start to, I don't know, wake up so that the the cracks in their own logic and their own mentality starts to break so that they understand what is actually going on. Again, it's always about the money. It will always be about the money. And until the world is on a better money standard, they're just going to keep getting poorer and more nihilistic and they're going to complain more. So this is why we are more hopeful. We spread a message of positivity and and that there is an escape route. And, and to me, I think that's what the American dream is, is basically in a nutshell that you can live a better life if you put in the work. And now this has been exported to everyone on planet Earth. And you just love to see it. The, the world's going to be a better place. Trust you, me. Anyways, Coach Carbon, jump in. What's your thoughts on this? I think, I think we need to change the term. We'll, we'll call it the Bitcoin dream. So Yeah, exactly. They were going to light the flame. Uh, we'll be a beacon because there's never enough time to tell people about, about how Bitcoin can save the world or how Bitcoin is hope. Uh, you mentioned about why do we work for... Uh, money that people can print. I shared a uh, Instagram story today that said, why do I pay taxes when the government can print for free? Um, before I became a Bitcoiner, he's like Neo in the Matrix, you know something's not right. People realize something's not right, but name the title of the show is simply Bitcoin. It's very simple. The money is broken, but unless you do the work and look into Bitcoin and understand it, you won't, you won't see it. And I kick myself because I had various opportunities to see Bitcoin before and didn't. Um, when I did about three and a half years ago, I had the time, the time freedom to do so. And that's what people need. People need the, the time freedom, but also people like ourselves speaking daily about it, have, having been that person, that resource that they can go to and, and ask questions. Um, it's just, there's so much that the money affects that we don't realize. And the way society is set up, the education system, the political system is set up in a way that we don't ask that question or we, we, or we can only get so far by by asking questions they, they they tell us what they want to tell us to keep us in that matrix uh, but slowly but surely one by one we are breaking people free love 100%. it and and to your point coach carbon apparently today is the 25th anniversary of the matrix so i'm glad that you brought it up oh wow <laughs> total <laughs> total total coincidence um anyways guys if you are enjoying the show help us break a hundred likes within the first hour of the show. So if you're watching us on YouTube, make sure to smash that like button. If you are enjoying the content, if you're watching us on rumble, there's a little grayed out thumbs up. If you smash it, it turns green, feels good. Uh, so shout out to the 67 of you guys watching us on rumble and shout out to the Twitter audience. We're almost at 400 live viewers on Twitter. So make sure to smash the like button, share the video with your friends. If uh, your friends are still kind of talking politics, they're like, why? Why can't I afford a home? Like, why can't I just share this video? Waking up, wake them up to the reality of Bitcoin. It's here for everyone. It's just a matter of waking people up. This is information narrative trench warfare, right? The other side does not want you to know that you have a way to opt out of the political madness. Anyways, before we get to the news, I do want to give a very special shout out to our latest merch drop. We teamed up with a Bitcoin artist named Asanoa, and uh, we have all these different types of shirts and merch. We have the peaceful Bitcoin revolution with the Guy Fox Simply Bitcoin uh, logo. We have the gold Bitcoin orange pill. We we have the gold Bitcoin, the gold 
pill, the gold Bitcoin pill. We have a gold Bitcoin snapback, a gold Bitcoin dad hat. We got ladies merch as well. So guys, check out the latest collection, the Simply Bitcoin collection. It's on simplybitcoin.com slash collections. Uh, you can check it out there and uh, get it while supplies last because it is flying off the shelves. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get to the news. We have a lot to talk about today. Let's check it out. Here we go. The Daily News. I want to give a shout out to our sponsor, Foundation Devices. It's self custody done right. They built a premium grade hardware wallet called Passport right here in the US. It's fully open source and verifiable. It's the most intuitive Bitcoin wallet designed with a UX reminiscent of a simple feature phone. So you will know how to navigate it and use it the moment you pick it up. Get your Bitcoin off exchanges and into your into your own hands in just a few minutes. Experience the peace of mind that comes with taking ownership of your own keys. After a massive sellout during Bitcoin Miami 2023, the passport is back in stock at foundationdevices.com. Bitcoin only, open source verifiable, completely air gap security model, gorgeous design craft, premium grade materials. If you're thinking about getting your Bitcoin off exchanges, this is the one for you. Check out the passport link in the show notes below to learn more. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I made it incredibly easy for you guys. You could scan the QR code on your screen. It'll take you directly to the Foundation Devices website where you can get yourself a passport hardware wallet. It's completely open source. It's easy to use. Highly recommend it. If you pair it up with the Envoy app that they have, uh, it makes uh, signing Bitcoin transactions in cold storage incredibly easy. So check out uh, Passport by Foundation Devices today. All right, so I do want to uh, do a quick ETF update. Uh, so BlackRock continues to stack those sats. They're almost at a quarter million Bitcoin. They're currently sitting at 245,000 Bitcoin. Fidelity, finally, a little bit of an uptick from 135. They're up to 143,000 Bitcoin. And the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust uh, continues to go down. People seem to be dumping that Grayscale. Uh, MicroStrategy still still sitting at 214,000 Bitcoin. I think Michael Saylor really wanted to hit that 1% mark of the total Bitcoin supply, and he totally did. It's just a matter of time before other public companies follow in his footsteps. Bitcoin's incentives are irresistible. So we were talking about the Bitcoin dream, as uh, Coach Carbon so, uh, so elegantly put. But we have to understand what's on the other side, right? So... We always say Bitcoin or slavery. Some people think it's hyperbolic. It is not hyperbolic whatsoever. Uh, you have a future. You have two futures in head uh, in front of you. You have a future of central bank digital currencies. You have a future of state money. You have a few an inflationary future. You have a nihilistic future. You have a poverty future, or you have the exact opposite. You have a Bitcoin future. And make no mistake, very, the very powerful elites, the bureaucratic elites that have benefited tremendously from being able to create, create money out of thin air, these bureaucratic elites want you to continue using their system. And if it means trying to coerce you to use it, make no mistake, they will definitely do that as well. Um, and it, if you guys have been paying attention to Simply Bitcoin. And look, guys, this is going to become... And it's starting, it's starting, but it hasn't really gotten there yet. But this is going to become extremely political. This is going to enter the political discourse in a country near you or in your country. In the U.S., it's already happening. You have the leading Republican, no, the Republican candidate for president, Donald Trump, saying if you were to elect him to office, he will make sure that no CBDCs will get rolled out under his presidency. Uh, you have RFK Jr. saying something very similar, protecting the right to self-custody. You had Ron DeSantis, who dropped out of the race, saying something similar. You had Vivek, who's the, actual, who's the person who actually told Trump about central bank digital currencies. He is talking about uh, basically the dangers of CBDCs, and also he's pro-Bitcoin. Looks like Trump hasn't come around for the whole uh, Bitcoin thing, but at the same time, if you're anti-CBDC, 
in a way, you're pro Bitcoin because you're what you're doing is that you're slowing down the competitor. Now, here's the thing, and we've always talked to you guys about this. Bitcoin relies on incentives. My money is always on incentives. The other system relies on coercion. If people had a choice and they were educated on the matter, this is why this information narrative trench warfare is so important. This is why sharing this type of content, this is why making memes, this is why telling the people, your friends and family around you about what the actual two choices are. Because again, there's the, the other side is going to rely and hope that you're not fully informed on the matter. Okay. So people had a choice between something that can be censored and something that can be debased and something that can be debased and versus something that has a cap supply. It's absolutely scarce. It's censorship resistant. What do you think people are going to choose if they're fully aware of the two options? People are going to choose, obviously, the better option. And the reaction from governments is obviously going to be, it's not going to be a really good one. Because you have to understand how much power comes from their ability to just print money. There's an evil alliance between the central bankers and the politicians. The politicians provide air cover and the central bankers print money, right? And this infection has been here in the U.S. since 1913, right? And I love Ron Paul's quote, his famous quote, which I think is so fitting. It's not a coincidence that the bloodiest century in human history is also the century of central banking. All of that being said, I had to give that preface because it's important that we stay on top of what is going on. So this is an article that dropped two days ago from Reuters. Swift planning launch of new central bank digital currency platform in 12 to 24 months. It goes on to say global banking messaging network Swift is planning a new platform in the next one to two years to connect the wave of central bank digital currencies now in development in the existing finance system. The move, which would be one of the most significant yet in the nascent CBDC ecosystem, given Swift's key role in global banking, is likely to be fine-tuned fine to when the first major ones are launched. Around 90% of the world's central banks are now exploring digital versions of their currencies. So, this is why we say what we say. This is why we say it's Bitcoin or slavery. This isn't simply Bitcoin's words. This is a Reuters article, and they're literally telling you 90% of the world's central banks are now exploring digital currency, uh, digital versions of their currencies. If you take a look at this uh, very, very nicely put website by the Atlantic Council, it literally has a diagram, it has a map of the world, and it'll literally tell you what the stage of of uh, the CBDC rollouts are, right? You have a pilot program. You have a pilot program in Russia, retail, wholesale. You have a, it's develop, it's developing in the United States, even though the, you know, Jerome Powell is saying it's not. Uh, it's retail, wholesale in China, in Europe. It's basically being rolled out as well. You guys have to understand what's at stake here. In Nigeria, it launched. By the way, it was an absolute total fucking failure. They got to the point that it was such a failure they they launched a arrest warrant for Binance executives because Binance was the on-ramp to uh, the alternatives to the CBDCs because people didn't want to use the CBDC. And I could tell you why people didn't want to use the CBDC in Nigeria. Because the CBDC does not solve the fundamental issue of inflation. Like, people aren't seeking a more efficient means of payment. That's the talking term. Like, that's the rhetoric. In the U.S., you have Zelle, you have PayPal, you have Cash App. It's incredibly easy to pay someone. But it doesn't solve inflation. They don't talk about that. They don't want to talk about that. Because they want to be able to retain that privilege, that power, 
of being able to create money out of thin air. And what Bitcoiners are advocating for is a more equal system where if you want to make more Bitcoin, you have to get in line like everyone else, pay for the cost of electricity, pay for the cost of manufacturing. And if you want to do it that way, then you can make more Bitcoin. But you don't have a privilege of just being able to create it out of thin air. Anyways, Swift's head of innovation, Nick uh, Kerrigan, said its latest trial, which took six months and involved 38 members of central banks, commercial banks, and settlement platforms, has been one of the largest global collaborations on CBDCs and tokenized assets to date. It focused on ensuring different countries' CBDCs can all be used together, even if built on different underlying technologies or protocols, thereby, thereby reducing payment system fragmentation risks. It also showed that they could be used in highly complex trade or foreign exchange payments and potentially be automated so to speed up and lower the costs of the processes. Kagan said the results, which had also proven banks could use their existing infrastructure, has been widely regarded as a success by those who took part and given Swift a timeline to work to. Quote, we are looking to we're looking at a roadmap to pro, uh, productize launch as a product in the next 12 to 24 months. Although the time frame could still shift if major economy CBDC launches get delayed, getting out the blocks for when they they would be a major boost for maintaining Swift's incumbent dominance in the bank to bank plumbing network. Countries such as the Bahamas, Nigeria and Jamaica already have CBDCs up and running. China is well advanced with real life trials in the EU on. The, e the ECB, European Central Bank, has digital euro one underway too, while the Bank for International Settlements, the Global Central Bank Umbrella Group, is running multiple cross-border trials. It goes on to say SWIFT's main advantage, though, is that its existing network is already usable in over 200 countries, right? So after I read all of this, this is what they want. This is what they want. This is, this is what they want for you. This is what the central bankers, this is what the bureaucrats, this is what the politicians, this is the future that they want for you. They want a CBDC. They want you living on a CBDC future so that you can use a system that they control. They have special privileges. They have the ability to create money. They have the ability to, uh, you know, control the money flows or you have a Bitcoin future. The choice is 100% up to you what future you want to live in. Do you want to live in a, in, a, in, a, in a free future or do you want to live in a slavery future? They're moving full steam ahead with this program. This isn't stopping. And, and I'm telling you, the reason that this thing was even created in the first place was because they saw the writing on the wall with Bitcoin. And they're like, no, 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 no. We can't have that. So... Wake up, get involved. The awesome part about this is that it really doesn't take that much effort on your part. It's just a matter of buying Bitcoin, earning Bitcoin, mining Bitcoin, and taking that Bitcoin to self-custody. If enough of us do it, we win. That's it. That's how we win, right? Anyways, there's, 600, there's 735 people watching us live on YouTube and X and about 62 watching us live on Rumble. If you guys are enjoying the show, make sure to smash that like button really, really helps with the algos. I'm going to pass it on to Opti. Opti, I mean, we've been covering this for quite a while. Dude, things are heating up. They're telling they're telling everyone what they want to do. I'm surprised people are just not woken up to this enough. Look, I'm glad that it's being included in the political discourse now. Like, I'm glad that it's being talked about by presidential candidates. You know, I'm glad that libertarian candidates are being elected, like in Argentina. You know, I'm glad that we have Naim Bukele, the beachhead of the Bitcoin movement in El Salvador. But like, bro, like, you know, I think that more awareness needs to be brought brought to this man. And I think less people, people have to get less distracted by the bullshit. Like to put it frank, man, the bullshit, the bullshit, like the whole, oh my God, the politics and the thing and then that, like guys, what's really important What's really going to make a fundamental difference for the lifestyle of you and your children and your children's children is this battle at hand. It's Bitcoin versus CBDCs. That's literally the future. It's not left, right, Democrat, Republican, conservative, liberal. It's not that. that that's the distraction. 
What's actually going to make a difference is what money will you be using? And then how hard is the state going to fight back in order for you to use the money that you want to use? That's really what's happening here. I'm glad that some people are waking up to this. I'm glad that it's being included in the political rhetoric, but I want to see more of it. Opti? Yeah, I mean, well, you asked a question and I'm sure it was rhetorical, but, you know, it, and we're dropping it today. So uh, check out the IRL that we're going to drop later today. We recorded it yesterday with uh, Daniel Prince and he hit the nail on the head. You asked the question, why aren't more people talking about this? Well, for lack of better terms and maybe not in the nicest terms, but everyone is basically sleepwalking. Almost everyone is sleepwalking out there. They've all been indoctrinated in state schools. No one's been taught exactly what's going on with the money because they don't want you to know about the money. Hence why everyone's like, oh, what's going on? The CBDC thing. That sounds good. You know, they're going to give me UBI. They're going to give, they're going to, you know, make payments better. This is exactly what we need to do. Like, it's not like payments aren't already good now. And we're not already using them on our phone anyways. But anyways, I want to go back to the Swiss stuff, you know. I did not have Taylor Swift endorsing a CBDC on my bingo card for 2024, guys. What is going on here? I, I thought she was a wholesome uh, musician here. No, obviously, that's a joke, a bad joke. But anyways, it is no surprise that the central banks of the world, 90% of them, want to or are actively working on a cbdc when we know what it's all about it's always been about control and the powers that be are not going to let up that control easily of course they're going to gaslight us and say that oh the cbdc system is just about a payment or oh the fed now is not really a cbdc or oh swift just wants to have interoperability or whatever the word is for the for the world like this is not as nefarious as you conspiracy tinfoil hat wearers are talking about on the internet but in reality that's what it is they want to have a digital system wholly controlled by them even though our money's already digital we can kind of argue on nuance that we are already in a cbdc system it's just not completely connected worldwide <clears throat> excuse me well, what happens when the whole world is on a digital money that can be controlled by a small cabal of people? It doesn't sound like a future I want to be a part of. And this is why I'm a Bitcoiner. And again, of course, every central bank wants to work on this. It is always about control. It will always be about control because if you control the money, what's the... I think it's Nathan Rothschild quote where he says, uh, give me control of a nation's money and I care not who they vote for. This is the game going on, guys. They want to control the money. They're not going to let that control over the money go easily. And hence why we're seeing all the central banks around the world or most of the central banks around the world actively work towards a CBDC system because they know the game like we know the game. They understand that Bitcoin eats their lunch, that Bitcoin is a checkmate on the fiat system, and they have to perpetuate this system for as long as they can and try to get as many people trapped in the system as possible because, you know, the saying we say all the time of it's Bitcoin or slavery, like when we first were saying it, it seemed hyperbolic. But uh, the more you listen to what Klaus Schwab and the World Economic Forum talk about, the more you understand that they want to corral you in a totally digital, dystopian, tyrannical future where the quote unquote elite are in control because they know better than you. Who are you peasant out there to know how you should spend your money? No, we know better than you. You need the nanny state. You need the perpetual nanny state to protect yourself from yourself because you don't understand how things work and it's really a slap in the face it's anti-human as far as i'm concerned and this is why i'm a bitcoiner it's like no i'm an adult well barely an adult you know i'm barely an adult at this point but i <laughs> i want to control my own money i've been saving dollars under my mattress since i was like 12 years old and now i have a money that is completely outside of their system and the more they actively work against bitcoin the more i know we are correct and and that I just, I, you know, like, uh, like Coach Carvin was saying, you know, I just wake up happy and like knowing that I'm on the purpose, I'm on the mission and spreading Bitcoin is the most important thing to be doing. But of course, first you got to plant those seeds and, and educate your friends and try to wake them up from their slumber because that's what's going on. Everyone is asleep at the wheel except for Bitcoiners, except for people that understand that it's always been about the money. It will always be about the money. And more and more people, I think, are waking up to this, this, uh, um, 
the game being played, the charade, you know, the the emperor wears no clothes. It's literally the Wizard of Oz, uh, you know, literally. And the Wizard of Oz is is about the gold money standard. Like it, it, it all goes back to the money and the manipulation of money. And now that game is being broken in real time. And you just love to see it and love being a Bitcoiner. Anyways, yeah. Coach Carbon, jump in. What's your thoughts? So, Nico, you mentioned about the writings on the wall. CBDCs came about to counteract Bitcoin. Um, we're past the ignore you stage. They've, they're done laughing at us. Now they're fighting us. I do wonder what their game plan or end game is. So obviously we as Bitcoiners, we've done our work. We see where it's going when we separate money from state. They're bringing in CBDCs to trap as many people as possible into slavery. I wonder, are we going to have a two, two, or yeah, two, tier, or two parallel um, civilizations where you have politicians now who some of the we see as puppets but they're going against the elites you have nation states rising up you've seen the renaissance in el salvador bitcoiners are going to go where we're treated best so we're going to seek out these places do the elites or cbdc's that they're bringing in do they plan on just capturing as much as they can and keeping it or essential structures do they at some point join the bitcoin community and try and try and fight us that way i, I don't think they're that, that naive to think the CBDCs are going to win outright. They must have. They must think about something else. They may not. They may not be bringing their best. I say Bitcoin is. We bring our best into best in terms of discourse, discussion, attitude. There's stuff that we don't know, but we can try. We fig, try and figure out along the way. Um, they seem pretty hell bent on CBDCs, but we spoke about ones that have come out already that haven't worked. We know anything that the governments control tend to fail. But the elites, they, they must have a plan. I, I don't think they're that naive to, th to think just the CBDC on their own are going to work. I just wonder what you guys think about that. Uh, no, I 100% agree. Like, I think it's naive to think that there isn't people within the Bitcoin community that are already glowing in real time and that they are. They're, uh, what's the, what's the, I'm, I'm, I'm blanking on the word right now, but they are misdirecting the conversation right now and actively pushing for things that are harmful for Bitcoin. I, I think that's happening as we speak. Yeah, I think I think the you know, I think the government is going to definitely try to like I, I think they're going to try because it's like, yes, they're not going to win if people have a free choice. I think they're going to attack the whole free choice aspect of it. I think that's really what they're going to focus on. And, you know, it, it, that, then it becomes an educational issue. Like then it becomes like, you know, if people are awake to what is actually going on, uh, then obviously we're going to win this thing. So like, I, I, I truly believe it's going to be some type of information warfare. Um, and you see them doing that. Like, I mean, they're doing that already where the, the gaslighting about the inflation, like the gaslighting, how the prices are going down. Like this, this I've seen, I saw this happen in the UK. You know, the, the current prime minister was doing this. Uh, he's like, Oh yeah. You know, the war in Ukraine, uh, you know, the pandemic, all this thing. It's like, that's what caused all the inflation. It's like, no, you guys just literally printed the money. Right. So you know, I think that as, as more people wake up and they start to understand what is money and they start to kind of wake up to this reality, I think, you know, I think we have a, a, a you know, a, an opportunity to win, uh, so to speak. But that, that's where it really falls down to us individuals to really, really push that message forward uh, and wake people up to that reality. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, let's get to the culture. I do want to talk to Coach Carbon, what he's working on and uh, what his personal projects are. Let's do it. Here we go. The Daily Culture. All right, everybody, I do want to give a very, very special shout out to Kevin Max. They're the most trusted place to buy and sell and host your Bitcoin mining ASICs. You got to check out the QR code on your screen right now. It'll take you directly to the Kaboom Racks Telegram Marketplace where you can connect with a member of their sales team. They make purchasing their products easy and transparent. Also, if you want to sell your Bitcoin mining ASICs with Kaboom Racks, you could do that as well. They have, an, they have a huge international network that you can access if you sell your Bitcoin mining ASICs with Kaboom Racks. So check out Kaboom Racks today. Literally, what are you waiting for? This is where I personally buy my Bitcoin mining ASICs. Scan the QR code on your screen or check the link in the video or the podcast description. All right, Opti, what's up, man? 
Let's go. All right. Well, before we get into everything that Coach Carbon is working, I know our audience loves the Bitcoin origin story. So maybe give the people, how did you find Bitcoin? Why did you fall in love with Bitcoin? And then we'll go into everything that you're working on. Okay. In a very quick nutshell, I believe I was I was a Bitcoiner before I was a Bitcoiner. Um, Same. 2018, I went down a rabbit hole of, of health and wellness. Uh, I missed Bitcoin a couple of times before and during that, that time. Um, purely because I think I didn't have the time to, to, to look into it properly. Uh, but COVID came around. I was given the opportunity then to look into Bitcoin for a friend of mine said he wants to speak about crypto. I had the time freedom to, to do it, but I'd already conquered delayed gratification, proof of work in terms of my, my physical appearance and, and, and wellness. And so when I saw Bitcoin and looked into it for maybe 10 hours a day for, for a whole month, my mind was blown. I was like, this is it. And I told everyone I knew about it. I sent them three loves, uh, masters and slaves of money. I sent them the sailor series. Um, that's not how we are in poor people. Um, <laughs> that's not going to work. Uh, I, I, I've changed my tax, but um, that sent me on a, on a journey of, of networking with people in the space. I met Daniel Prince, was an avid listener to his podcast, amongst others. I joined a, a, a learning group with Daniel Prince online. We used to jump on the call every week, people from all around the world. Uh, we then had a mystery call with John Vallis one day. So I tell people outside of the space and they say, who's John Vallis? But those who know, know. Um, John Vallis said a memorable sentence to me when I said I wanted the job in, in the space. I wanted to give something back. He said, why don't you provide value in your community? That night, the penny dropped. Bitcoin Ballers was born. I recognize the synergies between football or soccer, as you may guys, guys may call it, and, and Bitcoin. Um, and I created just an Instagram page. People could interact and, and earn sets. I then um, hosted football competitions, did skills competitions, then hosted them, um, then put teams into tournaments, linked with guys on Coin Corner to get a football strip with a Bitcoin logo on. Um, I've been to Amsterdam to host a satellite event, just come back from Madeira. And yeah, three and a half years in the space, I am where I am because of the community. So I'm so grateful. Um, you know, you see the web page there. I now have Bitcoin ballers who are able to receive sats through that through their proof of work. Um, every day, I, I wake up optimistic. Um, with the opportunity that I have, but also that I'm able to offer other people as well. Love it, love it. Let's uh, let's do this. What what is this? Submit uh, your own proof of work. You're, you're saying you can get sad. So how does this work for people? Yes. Yeah, so through um, Ibex, oh, awesome. Find it with um Bitcoin ballers through their proof of work. They submit their videos to me. I host on my website and YouTube, and people can scan the the sets, um, scan their QR code and, and stream those sets. The idea came from Perth Heat, who did it originally with the baseball. Um, yeah, so I linked over Ibex, and we do that with all our ballers who sign up. Um, so through their say through their proof of work, they're incentivized then to go out and perform on the pitch. But the, their proof of work doesn't just come from one game of playing well. They have to do training sessions and when they train and play how long are they going to do it for is it a week a month a whole season and over time they'll create a catalog of their proof of work over a period of time um, again incentive structures you are incentivized to bring your best every day to to try and receive stats but also to improve yourself as a player and as the web, my website says health wealth and life i started off as a health coach and then talked to people about wealth through bitcoin and their lifestyle they're, they're all encompassing if you Utilize Bitcoin principles and fundamentals as the base layer of your life. I believe your life becomes better, um, but it's not going to happen over a day, a week, a month. It, it takes time. We go through cycles. I'm coming to the end of my first cycle now. People that know me in a previous life may think, "Who's this crazy guy wearing orange all the time with his tin hat on?" But they can't dismiss that my life has been made better. The people around me, their life has been made better, and I strive to help other people daily. Love it. Love it. Well, I love your catchphrase, uh, Coach Carbon. I, I've been saying this for a long time on the show, but I think you maybe said it more eloquently. Health, wealth, and life. Change your habits, change your life. And that's one of my favorite things about Bitcoin. And we were kind of talking about that before the show of just like there's something about when you get on the Bitcoin standard, your every part of your life gets better. And I don't know, how do you communicate this message to footballers out there or people in your community? Um, but so I use the term the, the three selves. So we start with self-discovery. Um, with Bitcoin, you first have to do your own self-discovery, look into it. Um, with football, when you're learning new skills, it's, that, it's down to you to get on the football field and, and practice. Once you learn those new skills, you need to take ownership of them. So when you get out on the pitch and you do a skill and it doesn't quite work out, you can't blame the other player, you can't blame the referee, you can't blame the fans, it, it's down to you. 
similar to your, your Bitcoin journey, when you're learning about Bitcoin and uh, you're, you're, you're getting your stack, do you self-custody it? If the exchange goes down, that, that's down to you. Um, and then that leads into the, the self-discipline. Um, you have your you have your skill set. You're on the pitch. You're, you're playing well. Can you do it consistently over time? With with Bitcoin, you daily you're you're, you're using all those habits into your daily life, also into into your Bitcoin knowledge. Are you learning every day? Are you speaking to people? Are you living the Bitcoin life, basically? So yeah, self um, discovery, self ownership, and self discipline. Love it. Love it. And then one other things you mentioned, you know, you mentioned John Vallis. I love John Vallis. I, I love the the Hotel Hangouts. I love the Bitcoin Rapid Fire. But I think a message that we try to get across to our audience as much as possible. And y- you basically went down that same rabbit hole. It's like, look, guys, you don't necessarily need to be a Bitcoin developer or a miner or, or making podcasts. All you have to do is use the skills you already have and incorporate Bitcoin into it. So on that note, uh, you were telling me, I'm going to butcher this. You're a fitness instructor, right? Not a physical trainer. Uh, forget that there's uh, some some accolades you need there. But uh, I don't know. Do people, can p- people pay you in Bitcoin? How's this work? You know, and then just kind of touch on the idea of like adding your normal skills and just putting Bitcoin on top of it. Yeah, they, they can. Um, I can receive Bitcoin. I'll always um, do promote that. I'm, I'm going to quote Aaron Dawn, actually. He's a hairdresser from the UK, a professional hairdresser. He used to do lots of famous people. He coined the term when your passions in line with your incentives, amazing things happen. So when you incorporate Bitcoin in that, you see people with different passion projects. You have athletes, you have artists, you have um, designers, lots of different people, filmmakers, are using their passions, incorporating Bitcoin and, and seeing that amazing things happen. Um, you mentioned about my, my title. I am a fitness instructor. I can't call myself a personal trainer because I haven't paid to do that next level of training. So myself as a health, wealth and life coach, people, when I first started, actually yesterday was four years since I coined the term Coach Carbon and became, said to the world, I'm a coach. Now, people at that time could argue, well, what have you done? Three and a half years later, I have my proof of work. Now, technically, uh, not a personal trainer. If I call myself a wealth coach, I can't call myself a wealth advisor because I haven't got that, that bit of paper. And a life coach, again, to be a life coach, you need that bit of paper. But if somebody wants to work with me, we can discuss health, we can discuss wealth, and we can discuss life. And I'm pretty damn sure the conversation you can have with me, I can advise you or talk about things that is going to make going to make your life better. Do I need a bit of paper for that uh, to, to, to say that I can do that? No, but the fiat world tells people. I would argue, look at my proof of work. Look at other people's proof of work in the Bitcoin space. What are they doing? What have they done? What, what are they saying they're going to do? And if it's not, say, scammy, then then I would advise checking out what they're, what they're doing. So, yeah. You don't need that bit of paper that the fiat world demands that they want money for. And the, 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 we've left that world behind now. Show your proof of work. Cycles go by, go by quickly. I can't believe how quickly the time's gone. Right now, four years ago, we were in the midst of the C word uh, pandemic. Um, but for me, it was, a, it was a lifesaver. It gave me an opportunity to literally down tools. I was a construction project manager. I left that lifestyle behind me. Now that, that's a distant memory. Um, and now, as Sailor says, curate your environment. I've, I've literally done that with the help of, of Bitcoiners. Um, to mention it again, I can't shut them out enough. Daniel Prince, John Vallis, there's so many others that who I've reached out to. BTC Sessions. Everyone is a degree of separation away. You can reach out to them and not everyone always has the time um, or it might not happen straight away. But just be consistent in your work, consistent in your, your habits and, and, and it will happen, I believe. Love it. Love it. Couldn't agree more. Very similar journey. But I want to talk about, I say it all the time, you know, proof of work is a lifestyle. And you are mentioning that, that exact thing. And we were even talking before the show started of, uh, I, I, I forget what your phrasing was, but I was using it. It's like, you are a walking billboard for Bitcoin. Like, live a good life. And that's the best way to spread the message. And you, you have a good meme for it. You want to go on that meme? I forget what it is. I forget what you said. You lost me. A friend of mine once said, you're an advertisement for yourself. Uh, when I was had a, I was packing a few pounds, I don't, I can't remember what the other meme you we were talking about was. It's like something about uh, being better. I forget, I forget what you said. It's like bring your best. Yeah, say yeah. it one more time. Bring your best. Bring so your best. In your daily habits and your actions and your thoughts, bring your best. At the start Oof. of the year, I, I have the hoodie. This this hoodie is Bitcoin is dead one, but I do have the hoodies. Bring your best. Uh, basically. 
it came about, I think, on, on a, tw a Twitter thread where I said, the people that are attacking Bitcoin, they're not sending their best people. But if we bring our best, when they do eventually do their work and bring their best, we, we'll be able to beat them because we're going to be anti-fragile. But that's why I mentioned the, uh, the elites and the CBDCs. The people that they're sending to attack us, is that, and then is that to put us and us into a false, false sense of security? Because each time the attack comes, you're thinking, guys, you haven't done the work. We're doing the work. Yeah? What, what work are you doing? Where's the, <laughs> want the ultimate boss now? <laughs> love it. And and I really love it on like a personal level. Like bring your best every single day. Like that's what we have to be doing or personally what I strive to do every day. All right. Coach Carbon, really love that. But I want to give you one last chance. What's the last two sets you want to leave with the audience? It could be about life. It could be about fitness. It could be about Bitcoin. What's the last message you want to leave with the people? Um, it, it, shameless shill, back Bitcoin ballers. Um, I'm doing, I did a talk in Madeira, um, at Bitcoin Atlantis. I'm going to do one in, in Carlton FC, um, in Nottingham in the UK in a couple of weeks. And it's about how do we get the world to adopt Bitcoin about using your passions. I'm using, using football. We have a great opportunity as Bitcoin ballers. Um, each day that goes by, dimmer and slimmer, but we have an opportunity to enter the world's biggest 7v7 tournament in North, in Cary, North Carolina. Um, We've signed the agreement. We just need the funders. So we're looking for a big sponsor that can come on the front of our shirts. They've just announced the 28th team out of 48. So there, there are 20, I think, 20 spaces left. Um, we're hoping to be one of them. Uh, we're doing everything. I've, well, I'm doing everything we can. I really can. There's others help up and support me. There's other Bitcoiners in the community. But we're looking for a whale. But but the, the message I'm going to leave everyone with is do what you can do for the community. Um, Bitcoiners will support your back. You Again, I am where I am right now because of Bitcoiners around the world. And I thank them every day for it. I am now looking to to pass on that opportunity, leave the, leave the ladder down for other people coming up. Um, but if I can get Bitcoin ballers to this football tournament, have the Bitcoin logo on show, there's going to be over a million viewers, over 70,000 people on site supporting. Um, yeah, I'd love to have a Bitcoin team there um, to show what Bitcoiners are about. We are about the community. We are about education. And it's not what the mainstream media tell you um, in the news. Uh, we're going to get rid of all the FUD. Um, yeah, that, that's my message. Do what you can do for the community on a daily basis. Amen to that. Amen, Amen to that. Well, well also, low-key, you know, Nico uh, may not be in football shape anymore, but he does love playing FIFA. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay man. all right hold on nico i i gotta i gotta i gotta say something uh the bitcoin bugles trolling me because opti when are you gonna talk about the march maxi madness nah, bro you you guys put vote for me uh, <laughs> on the twitter uh, vote vote for opti but it, i mean bro the bitcoin bugle put me with the like <laughs> with jack you, maulers you me, like against hard that was like my first bracket was jack maulers bro all like, right holy. vote for jack maulers but uh, vote for opti <laughs> like, <laughs> on twitter go to the bitcoin that. bugle <laughs> God damn. Oh, man. All right. Well, Coach Carbon, this but is yeah, great. Vote, really vote appreciate for, the message, man. Vote, vote for Opti so Opti can make it to the next bracket. Anyways, Coach Carbon, thank you so much for joining us on Simply Bitcoin Live. We appreciate it. Guys, go check out Coach Carbon. Support fellow Bitcoiners. It was great to see you in person. And uh, guys, thank you so much for tuning into the show. If you enjoyed it, you know what to do. Smash the like button. Consider subscribing if you feel like we provided you value. But the number one thing you can do to help push the peaceful Bitcoin revolution is share Bitcoin content. Share it far and wide. Thank you, Coach Carbon, for joining us today. Really, really appreciate it. All right, guys, we'll be back tomorrow, 12.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for another episode of Simply Bitcoin Live. And uh, we'll be dropping a pre-recorded Simply Bitcoin IRL with the uh, host of the Once Bidden podcast, Daniel Prince, that goes out at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, we'll be back tomorrow with more content, more short form content, all that good stuff. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace out, everybody. So it was brought to you by BitcoinWell.com, a Bitcoin only platform on a mission to enable financial independence.